I, I'm Ron Milner, and I thank you all for coming. Uh, they're going to work on doing some uh, adjustments in audio and video to uh, make this uh, short movie happen. Uh, there's, a, there's a group in Nevada County, Nevada County Media, uh, who are making a technical documentary of technology in Nevada County, California. And the first chapter was uh, Cyan Engineering, where uh, we were the uh, secret think tank in the mountains of Atari. Uh, I, I worked there, and uh, Jason Howard of Nevada County Media was uh, putting the documentary together. So as soon as as soon as they get some audio together, we're going to see uh, a preliminary version of, of his uh, documentary. I started with uh, with Cyan Engineering up in uh, the Litton Building in Grass Valley, California, in uh, 1972, and uh, the, those were really heady times. We did all kinds of all kinds of fun projects, including the prototypes of the Atari 2600 and, and some other memorable things, and had had uh, many years of uh, fun in the mountains. Uh, why were we there? Uh, my bosses, uh, Steve Mayer and Larry Emmons, had uh, worked for Nolan Bushnell at Atari, at um, Ampex, and uh, they uh, did some consulting for him. He, he was too busy selling Pong games to do the next generation, so, so uh, they got working on games for, games for Nolan, and, expanded uh, steadily uh, once Atari bought out their their operation and I was like I was lucky enough to be there and I was an engineer on my way back from Colorado where the little electronics company I worked for had folded up and looking around for stuff um, I, excuse me if some of this is in the movie it's in the movie it's in the movie oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll hopefully we'll get some audio. Um, I guess what we can do, uh, yeah, invert the questions. Uh, uh, do, do any of you know anything about Cyan Engineering and the early Atari days? Well, you're going to learn all about. <laughs> I've been doing interesting things in uh, Grass Valley since this, the uh, days of Atari. When Atari went out, uh, it, they didn't even have the wherewithal to get anybody to come up to tell us we were fired. Uh, uh, I don't think there was even, I think there might have been a phone call that said, said you all are fired. <laughs> uh, you know, that's not the way you save equipment. And uh, documentation and organize shut down places. So there was a lot of chaos at the at the time they they closed us down. Uh, uh, some of us, like myself, didn't leave right away. I I stayed in the same office for ten years <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I did have to. I did have to pay uh, rent to the landlord instead of uh, Atari paying it. But uh, uh, never, never really moved out of the place and had my. It was a great way to start a business. Uh, take over, take over from another one. I still have the uh, Atari Atari parts cabinet with ancient TTO in it. And, uh, power adapters and a few joysticks, but I use the stuff now and then.
tonight. Uh, the first piece, oh, sorry. The first piece is a uh, one minute and 40 second trailer uh, that kind of gives you an idea of our project. Our project is a three episode um, document documentary series on uh, the history of technology in Grass Valley. So it starts about circa 1954 onwards, and of course cyan engineering is, is one of those stories. Uh, the second uh, is going to be a 24 minute piece, uh, it's a rough edit, um, it'll be appearing in episode two of the series, and it's all about cyan engineering. All right, so here's the first one. This is a story of gumption, perseverance, and damn luck. It starts with this man. Charles Lytton was Einstein brilliant. He was a genius, made countless contributions to the high technology of his time, vacuum tubes. In 1953, he moved from a young Silicon Valley to Grass Valley, California. I think that's what happens, right? A lot of us, we, we found a way to get to Nevada City Grass Valley, or we found it for the first time, and we don't want to leave. Soon after, he talked his friend, Dr. Donald Hare, into starting his engineering business in the same mountain town. Doc Hare, Grass Valley, I believe came to Grass Valley almost as much for the area as everybody else, but he knew Lytton. Doc Hare and a small cadre of incredibly talented engineers quickly made their mark on a new technology that was captivating the world television. Grass Valley knew how to do things with a transistor that previously took a tube. What came next is decades of innovation, ultimately leading to dozens of spin-offs and related technology companies who themselves made countless world-changing contributions. How they, how they got to television is this circuitous path of technology that I don't think anyone would ever predict. The fact that any of this happened at all is technically improbable. See you uh, enjoyed the rough version. Uh, hopefully, we'll fill out a little bit between making the VCS and the VCS going piffed. Uh, a <laughs> little bit in there. But, um, I guess uh, at this point, uh, I'm, I'm open to questions about about the time. If anybody has any questions. So first of all, thanks for all of you every single year in about every occasion you get, you guys come up and talk to us, know people that want to hear your stories. And it's so cool you guys are putting so much of this in the film. It's, it's so interesting to see how you guys make technology sound so interesting. I think it's going to appeal to an audience much broader that education systems have been struggling to try and appeal to. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about what this could do. The humor that's in this, the passion of you guys talking about stuff this far back, and oh, I still have to sheath and just ramble up. It's just very, very impressive. So thank you very much. Too thank short of a teaser, 24 the, minutes. Thank you. I, I, I didn't get in the commercial aspect was that, that uh, this is the last billion dollar product that I would launch that I wouldn't want a piece of the action. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Do no. you have any comments you want to add, uh, Jason? Sure. Uh, to, to your point, uh, the technology itself, I think, is, is hugely interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, we've done, I don't know, four or five interviews now uh, with these guys. and, and uh, it was really hard uh, selecting which clips we were going to show you today because there's just tons of stories. I hope some of those stories you hadn't heard before. Uh, I particularly like the one uh, about uh, uh, Al tells uh, about uh, uh, them almost buying Moss technology. I mean, imagine how, how different things would have been had uh, Al taken up on that offer. Uh, but, uh, 
these are these are certainly some amazing people. Yeah. The, the the other half of that the story, which was hinted at in the movie, was was how how Mr. Tremiel ended up with uh, uh, MOS technology. It was just by not paying his bills. <laughs> Yeah, it's such a big bill that there was nothing to do but for him to take over. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I wanted to say that I'm always really impressed um, seeing stuff when it comes to innovation, especially with old, like older technology. Um, I feel like the more technology that we have and develop, the easier the easier it becomes to you know develop more technology. But you guys were you guys were working with. Not a lot, and then it's it's really really impressive um, to just be on the forefront of something and and just be that creative and intelligent to really really innovate. It's awesome. Yeah, I think that might have been an advantage of not being in Silicon Valley is that you know we had to sort of make do and and cobble stuff together. Uh, one, one, uh, let me just add one, one aspect that, that uh, some people have asked about is why we were in Grass Valley. Uh, he hinted at, the movie hinted at uh, that it was uh, so that we wouldn't get uh, taken away on production problems, which is a good reason. But there was another very important aspect, which was secrecy. Uh, when the Palm, Palm Game, the video Palm Game came out, within one year there were 80 knockoffs ranging from direct photographs of the PC board that had been filled in. And uh, uh, that, that led to a, the real need for secrecy in, in making the game so that, the, you know, once it came out, you knew you would get, get knocked off because there, there weren't that many ways to pr protect things. Uh, a little later when we started having uh, ROMs and things, uh, mass program ROMs, at least you had the lead time of, of uh, the turnaround to make mass program ROMs like in, like in Grand Track that if someone were going to knock it off, they'd have to, have to get their order in. I think it was like, uh, like two, two or three months turnaround, which would be sort of the life cycle of a game in those days. So the secrecy, the secrecy was a real good reason we were in Grass Valley. Um, you know, if we if we told our neighbors, it didn't matter because they they weren't Silicon Valley people and couldn't couldn't pass the word. <laughs> but we, we we grew up in that that climate of you know keep it hush hush. Uh, how does uh, developing a console uh, give you this is? I mean, from what you guys said, you were working on the cutting edge of not just video gaming, but the industry in general uh, with the chips and stuff. Is it still the same for the newer consoles now? Um, I stopped working on uh, video game consoles after the 2600, so I'm not the one to ask that question. <laughs> I'd certainly encourage you to check out uh, the second episode of the documentary. Uh, the, the second portion of the episode will actually uh, uh, be largely on Ron, uh, and he, he went on and started this whole other other uh, life uh, where he did uh, mostly toy production, right, uh, for applied or through his company, Applied Design Labs. Uh, yeah, I did did lots of lots of toys and games and electric trains and musical instruments and uh, all sorts of all sorts of fun things. Uh, I, I avoided medical products because I never wanted to work on something that uh, if I made a mistake it would kill somebody. So I had to stick to the entertainment products. We have a few more minutes. Um, so I actually grew up uh, right outside of Grass Valley, but I never knew about this or anything. Um, is there is there any like work to? Because it should have been something I knew of. Um, I actually had an Atari. My you know I was obsessed with video game history and stuff growing up. Um, is there an effort to kind of make sure this history is known in the area? Or well, 
Well, we are making a documentary. I know, I mean, besides the documentary. <laughs> more direct, I guess, in there. Yeah, or, or, are you um, yeah. in Nevada County? Or? We're, we're trying. Uh, there, there is, uh, in Nevada County, a, um, gosh, uh, on the spot now. Um, there's, there's a group, uh, I, uh, the, the name is escaping me, but uh, that's, that's what they do, is uh, try and promote um, uh, the, the technology, the technology companies in Nevada County. Is there anything left of, the, of that in Nevada County? Uh, not specifically for Cyan, but uh, there is actually a, a burgeoning uh, uh, tech industry in Nevada County, uh, mostly stemming from uh, what would have been the Grass Valley Group. Uh, so, so the uh, Grass Valley Group uh, was a big video big company. Uh, uh, made the switchers, uh, video switchers, and a bunch of uh, uh, tech companies sort of came out of them. Uh, their, their engineers left and started new ones. There, there's, a, there's a lot of work uh, and an emphasis on virtual reality applications. Uh, going on up there. They uh, uh, have several startup companies working on applications there. Was that the time call? Yeah, I think, I think it's time. Bye. Uh, Thank you for coming. We've got, we've got some parties set here. If you want to, uh, to, to remind you of, oh, okay. we're, we're still a year out from releasing the film, so uh, maybe you can follow us on your Facebook or Oh my God. <laughs>